the same in Concord, captains, businessmen, uh, you name it. As in this village and the surrounding areas, we've all got loads of different vocations. Most pe people have done okay. And along comes this madman. Stick it in the middle. And everybody loved it because it was so different. Yeah. And instead of, instead of saying, what the hell is Alan Johnston doing mixing with this guy? Everybody is saying, we'd like to mix with him as well because it's a new thing, you know, a new thing. And he used to come up to me because everybody loved him. And he was always nice mm. uh, when he was here. Where he was difficult from time to time was in, in his own backyard, not in my backyard. He wouldn't come up here and shout at me, but he'd shout at me down there because, well, I suppose that's human nature, isn't it? So there we are. Now, what actually happened was that the, we, we were in the Hilton Hotel in Marbella. My wife and I on the typical one week or two week holiday, I can't remember. And as we walked through the reception areas to the pool or wherever we were going, we were aware of this exhibition, sculpture exhibition, in the hotel. Uh, and then uh, one, a few days into the holiday, I was lying on a um, recliner and then this man came and sat next to me who was rather exotic in his appearance, that's one way I can put it. Uh, and he had with him a briefcase that said JCB on the side. Well, I'm in the construction world. So it was a natural thing for me to turn around and say, are you with JCB? And he said, no, but I work for them. So I said, well, why? What do you do? And then he said, he said well, I do sculpture for them. And then the, the sculpture outside their factory in the Midlands uh, is one of the largest sculptors in the UK. Plus, I, he, he then told me that he was the sculptor uh, that, uh, in the exhibition. And we, we jumped up with it. And I was looking for a business that was a lot simpler than my construction equipment business. I suppose I saw an opportunity that was a rarity. And so I said, well, I'll do it. Uh, and we'll, you don't have to do anything, no money. We'll do the literature, we'll do all the exhibitions. You can turn up from time to time. We won't pay you for turning up, but just turn up if you want to be on the stand. But we'll do all, every expense involved with it. You just do the work. Well, it started off. It started off with with um, simple exhibitions in in um, the UK, uh, and then one uh, uh, an opportunity came up for a uh, an exhibition in um, New York at the Javits Centre uh, on the West Side, and so I said, "Why not?" It was a British uh, government-sponsored stand. So there was a contribution to it. So we bundled all this stuff together, shipped it out there, and they exhibited it. And the interest was enormous. And then we then after that we started to exhibit the, the biggest exhibition of this time is in Frankfurt, called the Frankfurt of Messer. Uh, and that, that's twice a year, uh, February and August, I think. And so we started to exhibit in Frankfurt as well. And that was for the European market. I can remember plenty. 1964, when I was working uh, as a trainee auctioneer and estate agent, I was doing property. And Mary and Valenti came into our office in Hereford and asked for the property we had for sale at World Hope, remember? I commissioned this for Julie for her 50th, and I gather that you actually designed this five years earlier, didn't you? For someone from Northern yes. Ireland? Yes, but it's become a landmark. And people come here now and they look at it and they're amazed at the size. The other thing is, Valenti, when you come in at night and you set off the security lights, the light up comes out of its eye and as you walk through the gates, it's as if it's staring at you. <laughs> well, it's amazing. I don't know if you've seen these drawings, but he is very talented with the way he moves his, uh, his 
uh, hand um, just seems to flow on the paper. He knows exactly where the pencil's supposed to be, where a line's supposed to be. Um, and that's the beginning of his vision. He puts it down on paper and then from that piece of paper he's able to create um, something in, in 3D, in, in metal. Once, actually, I've drawn onto a blank piece of paper the size I wanted, this is actually a plan for me to work on, where in fact I can bend the metal um, and shape it to the to the exact size and get the balance from the sketch, from the drawing, and into the sculpture. And first of all, I'll bend the sort of outside shapes, the sort of silhouette where I can actually weld metal to. <laughs> bend the sort of the outside piece and then go to the middle piece and all the, all the time I'm thinking how can I produce this sculpture in the flat metal so I'm not just thinking of a flat shape it's a good piece of sculpture has to be three-dimensional you should be able to look at it from all angles so both the the 2d elements is, and the 3D element is very important in his work. Well, it's, it's unique, but the, the, the thing that is very unusual with Valenti's work is that it's hollow. So you've got a three-dimensional work, but if you consider the hollowness of it a fourth dimension, I suppose it is, then that is incredibly unusual. 